So we have with us uh, Pramod and Pratik, and they're going to talk about simplifying speech-to-text processing with Apache Beam and Redis. Give them a warm welcome. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Pratik. This is Pramod. Um, like I said, uh, we're going to be talking about a real-world example of uh, speech-to-text uh, processing use case and some of the um, complications that you might encounter in the real world when working on something like this. And um, we want to run you through a design journey of how we progressively evolved on the solution. And um, we're going to rate it on four pillars of um, external dependencies, um, latency, um, code complexity, and completeness of the output. Uh, as we go along, you will see some of those switches you know, flip between red, green, yellow. And so that's what we intend to do today. So that's the agenda to give you an overview of what the use case was like, how we evolved it over time uh, to get to a desirable state of what worked for the business use case, and some of the lessons that we learned as we went through this journey. So with that said, uh, let's dive into it. So the overall scenario that we are going to be talking about today is described by this diagram here. Um, so the scenario is of a call center interaction between a user and an enterprise you know, customer service agent. Um, as they're talking, all the, all the speech is getting transcribed in real time and being published to PubSub topics, which you can see on the left-hand side here. And what we are going to be focusing on is this, this piece here, where we look at that data that's being transcribed in real time, process it, create certain payloads for, um, for scoring by a machine learning model in Vertex AI. And that score then gets published out to an enterprise system that determines if um, what would be the next best action to present to this agent helping the customer. Right? The key thing to take away from this diagram is the fact that there is, an, there is a customer that is online. So latency is very important here because we need to get back with an output, like this loop at the end of it. This has to complete in a reasonable amount of time for the overall solution to be useful. Right. So this looked fairly straightforward, right? Data coming in, process it, send it out, score it, send it back. So what's the problem? So this more accurately represents what we were talking about before. So when we say the customer and an agent are talking to each other, it's not as simple as just you know two people just talking, right? So what you see at the top here, typically when you call into a call center, you would be on wait for a little while. You might be attended by one person. They may or may not be the right person that you need to talk to. So you can get a transfer to some other person. It could be a warm transfer where the, some, the other person, the other agent comes online while you are still talking to the first agent, or you might go back to a queue and then be rerouted to someone else, right? So it's not just as simple as just two people talking, take that text, send it to a model, right? So that's one piece of this. The other piece is, as you can see in, in this example, it's not one source of data that we need to process. There's multiple things happening here. So what you see at the top is, we, we like to call it three things, events, transcripts, and metadata. So events is what is happening. Who is joining a conversation? Who is leaving a conversation? You know, Has the conversation ended? So on and so forth. Everything that's being said, that gets transcribed. Those are the transcripts. Like, so that is actually what was said in the call. And then the metadata is who said it. So in a call center environment, it's, it's not easy to identify it, if it was the agent that said something or if it was the customer. So there's some processing that needs to happen for that uh, inference to be made. Right? So there is some dependency between the transcripts and the metadata associated with them. Um, not, not shown in this diagram is the fact that there is a one-to-many relationship between these. So for example, if you just have one agent and a customer, then you just get a couple of entries here about who's who. If you have multiple, then you have many. But um, you get one metadata object for every type of 
uh, participant in the conversation, right? The key thing to note here is the fact that there's these three sources of data, but not all of them have the same key. And this is an oversimplification, what we have described here, but uh, they need to be joined by multiple keys, and not all of them have all of the keys. So just keep that in mind for when we go through the design. So that's the functional slash slightly technical aspect of it. But very important to note is the fact what you see at the bottom here. When dealing with data in the real world, you will see the problem with duplicates. So you might get things uh, multiple times, or you might not get them at all. Sometimes data goes missing. And when you receive it, it could be arriving out of order. Um, for a use case like this, where certain events need to happen one after the other, and there are complicated business rules around what happens in this scenario versus that scenario, it gets a little bit complicated, right? So all of this plus some additional business rules. This is what we need to solve for, and what we're going to describe now is some of the design options and how we iterate through them and evolve them to, um, to, f to finally get to the final solution. So. Let's start with design option number one. Um, so it looks busy, let me explain. So what you see at the top there are the three data, three key data sources that we have. So we have the events coming in, the transcripts, and the metadata associated with, associated with them. Um, what we could do is have a session window. And uh, sorry, I forgot to mention. The output that we're looking for in this scenario are for every time a new agent talks to a customer. For the first few minutes of the conversation, we need a couple of payloads of what was said in the first 60 seconds and what was said in the first three minutes. Right? So the way we could do this is we could have a session window at the event level, the higher level, key one, um, where we are just accumulating information and have a gap duration of three minutes so that um, when the conversation ends, we have some information about what was said in that conversation, and we start to apply all the business rules that we spoke about before, and we create an output. Right? So we, have, we accumulate some information in a session window with a gap, and then the output that we need to produce is at, not really at a conversation level. It's for every agent we need to generate the output. Right? So we need to rekey this information to a more granular level and then figure out, so what you see in red there is an event of an agent joining a conversation. And at two marks from that point onwards, so 60 seconds and um, three minutes, we need to generate some outputs. So we accumulate some stuff, we rekey it, we set up a couple of timers to expire at the duration that we need. And at the expiry of that timer, we run through all of our business rules and we create some payloads and send it downstream. Cool. So now, how does the solution do in terms of those four pillars that I described earlier? So if you think about it on these lines, as far as dependencies go, in the solution we are maintaining, maintaining everything within Apache Beam, so there's no external dependencies outside of Beam. So that's a green, that's a good, that's a good thing. Uh, the reason for that is conceptually, if you think about it, like I described before, latency is very critical to this use case. We need to get back with an output while the customer is still online. So if you think about it, it makes sense not to have any external dependencies, so you don't lose time just waiting for you know, things to go back and forth between different systems. So that's good. But having said that, overall latency in this solution is actually pretty bad. The reason is, we need for the session window to close before we can act on any information that it emitted. And in this scenario, if you think about it, for, for a gap duration of three minutes, you essentially cannot start doing anything until that session window closes. So meaning that you have to wait three minutes 100% plus whatever else time it takes for those timers to expire. So that is not ideal in the scenario, especially given the business use case that we are trying to solve for. For completeness and complexity, it gets two yellows. The reason is, even, even though we are waiting for that three minutes to initially accumulate the data, and then 
setting those timers. The ordering of events is still very important here. And if things are not arriving in the right order, order at the time that you try to generate the outputs, you still might not be able to get all of the information that you need. So it works most of the times, but there are scenarios where it can fail. And in terms of complexity, it is because of the rekeying that we are doing in the second stage, if you've seen the diagram before, it kind of reduces the complexity a little bit for us because the outputs are at the same level as we need them to be. But still, it, it could be made simpler. So we give it a yellow. Um, I'll transition it over to Pramod to explain this a little bit more. OK. Thank you, Pratik. Um, well, uh, Pratik mentioned about this trade-off. So initially, we were talking about latency here. So let's go to the next slide. So what we did change. Uh, so the session window gap, three minute closure. Three minutes sounds good, but the conversation from customer and uh, the agent, multiple agents can last for hours. So this is a no-go. Design approach number was flat out no-go. So we had to go with uh, we had to go with an approach two, which was much more of an evolution of one. We tried to tackle the latency by taking the timers into the session window, although we knew that the granularity of the key was not correct for the output. We had to do this to see how much benefit we would derive, like trying to avoid um, waiting for the window to close before emitting the output. So that's what we did in design approach number two. And here, I, for the for the whole, like if you have seen the previous design and this design, like pretty, pretty much essentially we pulled out the timers into the same session window and we tried to carve out the um, outputs early, early on. This helped to some extent to solve some of the issues. Um, and the challenge here was uh, more on like the completeness of output and, and the complexity to do all this without doing any rekeying was pretty much made the code very, very, brittle, I would say, and complex. So, and there is no guarantee that output would come at all in this approach. So here we tried to tackle the latency. Obviously, it improved a bit um, because we don't have to wait for the whole session to end. But the completeness completeness was at totally like, you know, we, we went right on it, and code complexity became very large. Now, why did we go through this journey is because of the fact that we were we were going with an assumption that the dependency external state is something that we should avoid. So that that premise brought us to all this journey that we went through with this customer. And now we go here, uh, we go to the next final design that um, pretty much was what was delivered to the customer and also it worked perfectly, handled all sorts of uh, complexities and also came out with um, latency figures that customer was pleased with. And here what we did was me and Pratik, we had to go back to the drawing board again because we were at crucial moment here with the design. And we thought about like how do we bring in Redis or how do we bring an external state here? Uh, although that was what we did not do for the previous thing. So here the approach became pretty, pretty much simpler uh, wherein we are still taking all three event types and we are trying to use Redis sorted sets for duplication and ordering purposes. So Redis has this sorted sets which allows you to dedupe and also order by any parameter that you supply, especially essentially a timestamp we need it here. And we could basically get dedupe and ordering by free and with Redis TTL, we were able to do state management also automatic, automatically. This also helped us in uh, eliminating the pipeline complexity. Right now, we are just processing those event signals. We are not dealing with the transcripts or the metadata, which basically flows straight into a Redis, a low latency persistent store, without any um, beam or data flow pipeline involved. And then we would trigger off of the signal that comes off event. At that point, the data is already deduped and ordered. And because the transcripts need to be ordered to make any sense for the model, ordering was very important for us. And we did not introduce that ordering on, inside the pipeline, but rather the Redis would do it automatically for us. All we need to do is take the event signals timestamp and 
from that moment on, get the transcripts, map it to the labels, all in the Redis query. We didn't even bring the data into the pipeline. We, sub we submit the query and get the output of the Redis, pack it up, send it out to the scoring. This is this this simplified a lot of it. Now, coming to the the what we achieved, we achieved latency. Uh, we thought latency would be bad, but subsequently, I think uh, we'll cover the latency figures. We got ordering for free. We also got dedupe for free for the transcripts, and even the cleanup of the stale data because the conversation can last up to six to eight hours, and customer wanted a clean way to delete the data and keep things uh, flowing. So that also was tackled with this solution. And if we had to go back and do all this within the pipeline, the pipeline would have become much more complex and uh, harder for customer to manage also because of the, the team that they were in uh, from a beam uh, or a data flow knowledge perspective. So what did we, I would hand off uh, uh, to Pratik to continue on the trade-offs for the design three. Yeah, sure. So as you can see, compare this to what you've seen before on designs one and two. Um, we do kind of introduce an external dependency here on Redis that comes with some costs because you now need to have another store, you need to pay for it. But we gain a lot on all the other three pillars though because from a latency point of view, this design takes advantage of what you saw in design two where you don't have to wait for a session window to close before you can act on anything. So you still take that advantage. From a completeness standpoint, because of the advantages of sorted sets that Pramod just described on uh, ordering and um, 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 the uh, deduplication that we get from sorted sets, the chances of you missing something, because the, the other two, the transcripts and the metadata, they come in the they go directly into Redis. So you're not trying to manage things or forcing things into a window with a key which may or may not be at the right level. You have some information, you may not have some information. Because you get rid of all of those scenarios and you can just directly take it and put it into Redis, this design gives you the best option or gives us the best option of generating an output that has all the necessary elements to it. Right, so we scores better than the previous two designs on completeness. And complexity is really where it really, really made a huge difference. If you look at the overall solution, if you could look at the code, it was so much simpler in this third design compared to the other ones. Now, from a technical, functional point of view, maybe it's not that big a deal if your code is complex, but from a maintainability point of view, because engineers move here and there, so if somebody new comes in now, they have it's much easier to manage the solution over time as opposed to if it were you know, a huge, complicated piece of code. So this is this is how it turned out in the end. Um, if you if we go back to our original assumption of not introducing external dependencies because they would add to latency, if you look at the second column over there, adding Redis did not give us too much of a penalty in terms of overall end-to-end -end latency. If you look at it, it's what maybe one percent of our overall latency, less than ten milliseconds for the more beefed up. Uh, instances at the bottom there. So Redis itself only accounted for about 10 milliseconds in the overall end-to-end -end latency. And the uh, everything included, so waiting for the data to come in, like this is excluding of course the wait times of the first minute and third minute. But beyond that, all the number crunching that we need to do to create the payloads, send it out for doing a prediction and getting that result back and sending it out, all of that could be done within one second. So roughly we hit about 900 milliseconds in terms of latency, which was very much acceptable for this use case. This was what the final solution looked like. Uh, it slightly differs from what you've seen before, uh, only the fact that there are two data flow pipelines, one for actually creating the payloads that go out for scoring, and a second one for actually invoking those predictions from Vertex. The reason for doing that is, um, again, from a strategic point of view, your machine learning model might change or you might, might wanna do this for multiple models. So it makes sense to do that pre-processing in one place and then emit that payload out. And then it almost becomes like a plug and play solution where you can plug in as many models as you like and do the scoring and send it out to whoever needs to consume that information. 
So what are the key lessons learned from this whole exercise? There's some functional, there's some operational. Uh, we already spoke about most of the functional stuff, so I'll tackle the right side of this here first. Um, from an operational standpoint, probably the one thing if we could point out would be rep having representative test data for something like this. If you think about it, if, if it's just a case of taking some an input data stream, transforming it in a certain way, and then publishing it back out, it's relatively easier. Compared to when you have stateful processing, like in this scenario where a lot of things have to happen that are correlated with one another, um, creating test scenarios for that is much more complicated because if you think about it, your options are you can start publishing test data yourself, but in this case, it would have meant publishing that into PubSub, but you're still at the mercy of PubSub. It can determine how it might you know, serve it to your data flow pipeline. So you may or may not get into those duplicates and missing data and all of those scenarios. So it's difficult to test one particular scenario, right? What would be ideal would, would be to have a non-production simulation version of the same data that you expect to encounter in the production environment. So this, this is very, very important. Beyond that, as you can see from the figures that we just mentioned about latency, observability of the whole solution is very important. So you need to know at each point what is the penalty of changing things. So um, having dead letter queues for you know when exceptions happen, because they will happen, and having detailed operational metrics and capability to um, inspect exactly what's going on with the business process by you know leveraging you know writing stuff into BigQuery or you know publishing logs somewhere so that that those can be analyzed that is very critical and configurability so if you could look at the code for these pipelines I think we ended up with 50 or so parameters for each pipeline each of the two mm -hmm. uh, that we developed so so that you don't have to change the code every time you know the business users go and change I want to get an output not at three minutes but at five minutes so you know, employ the options that Beam provides to create the pipeline options. Beyond that, on the left side, what we already discussed, but it's very, very important is um, what you see in the middle, the granularity of inputs. Uh, and Pramod, maybe if you want to expand on that a little bit more. Yeah, the, the granularity of the inputs is more on like, um, like if when, especially when you're dealing with like hierarchical data, where you have a top level data and like there is actually the processing needs to happen at the uh, middle level or the lower levels, then it becomes challenging for you to use the top level data and try to window, try to do kind of like processing aggregation within that top level. Things can get quite complex. So that is where our challenge here was, was uh, in this particular use case, it was a long conversation, but it was broken down by multiple parameters. And each of them had its own set of uh, uniqueness to it to f in terms of keying, in terms of processing. So that's what uh, was more of like challenge for us in this one. Yeah. And last but not the least is the latency. So if you think about latency, usually it's considered as a non-functional, more operational requirement on, yeah, you can generate the output, but can you generate it within uh, required duration of time? But in this case, it was so central to the whole solution that you need we needed to redesign the whole solution just to make sure like it was as important as the actual functional business rules that you, we needed to obey. So okay. in scenarios like these, latency may not just be an operational concern, but it may actually be central to whether or not the solution is actually And, and generally the latency driven solutions are very complex, even if the volume of the data doesn't dictate you for things to think beforehand. If, if you see that there is a latency involved as central piece of the solution, like for example in this case, there is no point of getting an output produced if customer has already dropped out of the call. So that becomes a mute point. So very important in these scenarios and maybe some other communication, transportation, logistics situations like that, latency where becomes more important. I think we should, we, we are done probably. Yeah. yeah, that was all, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.